I've been using a public beta of iPadOS 26 for a couple weeks now. And if you haven't experienced yet, I'm really excited for you to go ahead and hit install when it is released in just a couple weeks. I remember watching WWDC and just being an absolute hype as they revealed more and more features that would be coming our way this fall. And with that said, hi, my name is Jamie. It's no secret that I am a Mac user first. Maybe it's because of my age, I don't know. But I just wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that moment that I laid my eyes on that orange G3 Mac. Absolutely changed everything. But with that said, I still love my iPad, but sometimes, like some other Apple products, it leaves me feeling a little bit limited in what I'm able to do with it. And it's not because the iPad can't handle it, it's just simply because Apple won't let us. And this is not gonna be the typical YouTuber rant of wanting the iPad to be a laptop replacement because that's simply not the case. That would just be a touchscreen MacBook. And although that does sound nice, the iPad has always been a unique device. And when I watch younger generations interact with their iPads, it just really amazes me how they maneuver their way around the tablet in ways that a MacBook could never. And of course, the elephant in the room with the iPad OS 26 and the standout feature across all of Apple's operating systems introduced this year is, of course, liquid glass. And I've been torn between calling this a feature or just a cosmetic change, but it's everywhere in the UI. And some of the tiniest animations really shape and have even changed how I've been using the iPad. Starting things off, of course, with the lock screen, not only do we have even more immersive wallpapers than ever before, but even that initial moment of swiping up from the bottom is just so satisfying. And the attention to detail as you do simple things with touch, like sliding bars, adjusting volumes, is just really cool. And you now even have the option of giving all your app icons the liquid glass aesthetic. And of course, the all new window tiling introduced at WWDC has been absolutely incredible. Not sure how it took so many updates of iPadOS to finally get here, but glad the time has finally arrived. We're no longer limited to the number of windows we can have on display at any given time, with the flexibility of resizing them however we'd like. Last year, we could have up to four windows, but couldn't exactly shape or even place them where we wanted. This has made docking the iPad to the Apple Studio display actually useful, so I could take full advantage of the 27-inch 5K display. You still have the ability to use Expose by swapping up from the bottom if you do end up losing an app. And what's cool is that it'll remember you placed it, and if you had any other windows open at the same time, similar to Stage Manager, just better. But that's not all, we now have traffic lights in the top left-hand corner, giving you easier flexibility to expand, minimize, or even resize windows to predetermined shapes. This is much easier than three dots we used to have in the top center, or having to use different finger gestures to get the windows exactly how you wanted. Wait, there's still more. When you're connected to a mouse or your magic keyboard, the cursor now looks like a pointer. This makes it easier and gives you more precision when selecting new things, like in the new menu bar. I understand when they went with the previous cursor, it was meant to represent your finger, but this just makes more sense. But before we cut away from the new menu bar, it is pretty cool, but unfortunately not all apps fully take advantage of all the options you have available to you. But hopefully by the time this does launch, developers have enough time to update their apps. Again, I can't emphasize enough how good the experience has been while having the iPad docked to an external display huge leap from when we were first given the option to do so a couple years ago. So whether you're choosing to use your iPad at a desk or on your lap, we finally have some flexibility with the Files app. As I've already mentioned, my brain is very Mac first, so using the Files app has always been a general struggle. But I do like to access my documents stored in the cloud on my iPad. And we now have the option of selecting what app a file should open in. So whether if you prefer to work in Excel or Numbers, you now have the option to set it as a default. And we now even have the Preview app, which is a great way to view PDFs, but it even allows you to make small customizations to the document as well. You now have even more control of what information is actually displayed on the file app. Tagging files is always something we've been able to do. But now we can customize even further by adding colors to folders and even emojis to help you sort and find the content you need. Sounds cosmetic, but also helps you stay super productive when you have a lot of stuff going on and you can visually identify what you need faster than perhaps reading every folder in your library. Not sure I was prohibiting this before and although I don't use it, you just might. And that's the ability of adding one of those said folders to your doc. And this could be your downloads folder or any folder that you find yourself in and out of. So basically that's how I've been enjoying benefiting from iPadOS 26. But there is more. You do get all the cosmetic upgrades to iMessage, like customizable backgrounds. You do have enhancements to Image Playground. And you now even have the Journal and Calculator app. It's pretty wild. iPadOS has brought along some incredible long overdue features to the iPad. And although I primarily ditched the Magic Keyboard in favor of the Moth Builder case, so I could just use it as an iPad, as it was intended, you may call me a boomer. But for me, I don't think it'll ever replace my Mac. But for you, it just might. Let me know whether you think it can or can't down in the comments. While you're down there, of course, don't forget that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, I'll see ya.